Welcome back. In my last video, we started looking at Dan Harmon's Story Circle. Today we're going to start with Stage 5 and finish off the Story Circle. Let's get into it. Stage 5. They get what they wanted. The Hero with a Thousand Faces calls this the Meeting with the Goddess. This is something of a respite for our protagonists. It's important to think of these steps as points on a circle. So far, we've been moving around the circle for the duration of the story, and each point on the circle has a counterpoint on the other side. At this point, we're at the bottom of the circle in a place of relative comfort. Since this is the midpoint of the story, the middle of the second act, the counterpoint for stage 5 is stage 1, another zone of comfort. Like stage 1, this is another stage where certain revelations are made. From here, every action will be moving up the circle and back toward the protagonist's normal world. This is a place where anything goes. It's a time for deep revelations and complete vulnerability. In the Fellowship, this is where Frodo and the Hobbits arrive at Rivendell. Frodo finally meets with Gandalf, who fills him in on why he couldn't meet him at the Prancing Pony. He also speaks with Bilbo and learns more about his adventures and his involvement with the Ring. And of course, this is where we have the Council of Elrond. And since this is a safe space, if there's any romance to be had, this is where you do it. In the Fellowship, this is where Aragorn reconnects with Arwen, and she gives him the Evanstar. It's also important to note that the goddess doesn't always need to be a deity, or even female. That's just an archetype. In this context, Elrond is the goddess. But it could also be a weapon, a tool, an ally, an idea, or a revelation. Elrond is just a type of the goddess. We could also say that Sting, the Evanstar, or even the history of Gondor could be a meeting with the goddess. This is also where the hero makes an important decision to either continue or end the journey. At the Council of Elrond, it's decided that the ring must go to Mordor, but that doesn't mean that Frodo must. As far as he was concerned, his part in the journey had ended. He had no more obligation to go any further. He made a choice to continue after seeing how the ring was corrupting the hearts of the other council members. Stage 6. They pay a price. Remember, this model is a circle. Every point has a counterpoint in the story from here on in. The counterpoint for stage 6 is stage 2, which ends with a call to action. With this model, you could almost think of our novel as having two separate stories. In the first half, we're trying to get to the midpoint, stage 5. From that point, as we received a call to action at the end of stage 2, we receive another call to action at the end of stage 6. The point of this second Roto Trials is to get the protagonist back to the zone of comfort. You'll also remember that the end of this stage is the end of Act 2, where we lose key allies. That's why we pay a heavy price at this stage. In Stage 2 of the journey, Gandalf gave Frodo the call to action, which sets him on the Road of Trials. By the end of Stage 6, he loses Gandalf to the Balrog. It's also worth noting that the story circle isn't necessarily a straight line from A to B to C. Nothing is absolute, and it helps if you view the steps as guidelines instead of rules set in stone. Parts can be added or removed as your story develops. The Lord of the Rings is a good example of this, especially in the books. Tolkien takes many twists and turns in his work, and not all of them follow an established world-building structure. Returning to the Fellowship of the Rings, at the midpoint we have the Council of Elrond and the meeting with the Goddess. However, after Gandalf is lost to the Balrog, which constitutes the pay a price moment of the story, we go to Lothlorien where we seem to have another meeting with the Goddess with Lady Galadriel. This is followed by another pay the price moment when we lose Boromir to an orc ambush in the woods. This creates a challenge to story structures like the story circle because the second half of the second act almost seems to repeat itself. That's perfectly fine. As I said, the points on this or any other story structure should be seen as guidelines, not law set in stone. You can change the order of the steps, including or excluding as needs must, and still have a cohesive story. Feel free to play with the structure. Tolkien did, and it seemed to work out well for him. Stage 7. They return to a familiar situation. Now we're deep into Act 3, and the start of the denouement of the story. But just because the story's winding down, that doesn't mean the action needs to. The denizens of the Road of Trials don't want the hero to pass, and this is where they launch a last-ditch effort to stop him. This is a great place for one last car chase, or a dive through the flames to save a crying baby. Even for someone to stop their lover from leaving by pounding on the windows of the train as it pulls out of the station. Stage 8. 
They are changed. This is where the protagonist transforms and becomes the master of both worlds. The hero faces one final showdown before returning to the normal world. We need to remind the readers what happened in the previous stages of the journey. Remember, when in doubt about how to proceed at any point along the circle, look at the opposite point on the circle. The opposite point of stage 8 is stage 4. What happens in stage 4? Stage 4 is the road of trials where the hero must adapt to the new world. By the end of stage 8, he should be adapted and the master of both. This may mean using a gift given to him in stage 4, or demonstrating his mastery in another way. So where does this leave us with Frodo? Doesn't he run away with Sam at the end and leave his friends to fight the orcs all by themselves? Doesn't that spoil the plot? No. Once you realize what's happening, you see that things aren't falling apart, they're falling into place. The nice thing about the story circle structure is that it's not absolute. It's quite flexible, actually. You can leave out or overlap certain parts, and if you don't cut too much, it will still be recognizable as a story. This is a metaphorical return home. Frodo will get his physical return eventually, but for now, his return comes in the form of Samwise Gamgee. Sam acts as a small patch of the Shire. His friendship keeps Frodo sane as they continue their march on the wastes of Mordor. In this way, Frodo has spiritually returned home. This is also where we see the greatest change in the character. The dross has been burned away and he knows what's important. Frodo understands the consequences if Sauron gets his hands on the ring and how it corrupts the hearts of everyone near it. He can't trust anyone to help him but one stalwart friend. Not only must he destroy the ring, he must do it alone. That's it for now. In the next video, we're going to put the story circle into action and see how versatile this remarkable tool is. I'll also have a crack at it and write an original scene for you using the story circle as a template. I'll see you there. Until then, good writing and Calamus Gladio Fortior.